Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Implementing the Smart Automation with Taiwan Smart Manufacturing Webinars. It is my pleasure to be the host for this webinar. My name is Fiona. On behalf of FMM and Taiwan Track Center Kuala Lumpur, we appreciate you all taking off your busy schedules to join us today. We hope this webinar will bring you informative and fruitful to you. Let me just go through the housekeeping rules. Before we get started on the interest sharing from our speakers. I would like to just go through a couple of things for today's webinar in order to deliver a seamless experiences for you. Do key in your question at the Q&A box at the bottom middle of the screen. Name yourself and ask your question. We will address it by end of each section where we have already allocated time to do the Q&A and things you want to know. Secondly, yes, you will receive the slide and recorded video of this webinar after submitting the question. Without further ado, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Jacob, the Chairman of Industry 4.0 Working Committee to deliver the opening remarks. Uh, thank you, Fiona. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to test my mic. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear uh, you, Mr. Jacob. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Eva Peng, Director of Taiwan Trade Center Kuala Lumpur, Distinguished speakers, FMM members, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all. And I'm well pleased to welcome all of you to implementing uh, to the set the webinar on the implementing the smart automation with Taiwan smart manufacturing technologies. First of all, on behalf of the Federations of Malaysian Manufacturers (FMM), I would like to thank Taiwan Trade Center Kuala Lumpur for organizing the webinar today. Ladies and gentlemen, although most businesses are having a big challenge in facing the new norm caused by COVID-19, and I hope by now uh, we should be getting more used to the new, no the new norm, it turns out that this pandemic has been the greatest catalyst for digital transformation. Traditional supply chains and manufacturing ecosystem have become obsolete and need to be improved to more adaptable, agile solution that is fully digital, digitally enabled. And this journey towards digitalization and smart automation requires a lot of resources from human capital to capital investment. To embark on this journey, manufacturers are required to prepare for lots of fine tuning in their operations or even prepare to lose uh, or to feel uh, in the initial state, learn from their mistakes and continue to fine tune the process. And modern manufacturing is looking promising with all the intelligence that comes with digital technology advances while capitalizing on generations of previous experience. What I can see and hear from the industry at this moment is that the fundamentals are right and the prospect are indeed real. The entire concept of manufacturing production has been changed. How we wait, who does it, and with what materials and human inputs. The pace of change solutions are increasing exponentially, and this is happening right now. And when we talk about the future of manufacturing, ladies and gentlemen, Industry 4.0 and smart manufacturing will take hold and the phase and place of production will change. We will see more and more people being employed in development, design, data analysis, and R&D. We need to see this technological revolution as the means of accelerating new ideas, opportunities that can serve all manner of business, markets and workers. It is how value and competitive advantage are created and sustained. Ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, MITI in short, has developed a national policy for Industrial 4.0 called Industrial Forward. The national policy on Industrial 4.0 charged Malaysia digital transformation in the manufacturing and services sector. As a policy, industry forward 
provides an agile frame framework that will remain relevant in the future with four specific overarching goals. Number one, that is to drive continuous growth in the manufacturing GDP. Number two, to increase national productivity. Number three, to create high skilled employment opportunities. And lastly, number four, to raise innovation capabilities and competitiveness. Not only in Malaysia, I believe that the government support in Taiwan for Industry 4.0 is also very strong. Government initiative spending from artificial intelligence, AI, IoT, and other industries. Taiwan is proving it is ready to take a leading role in industrial innovation and become the leader in Industry 4.0 development and implementation. I hope there will be more Taiwan-Malaysia collaborative efforts to take place to create awareness towards Industry 4.0 especially in smart manufacturing. Before I end my speech, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my deepest appreciation for the speaker today. They are Mr. Tian Shenzhen from High Wind Singapore Private Limited, Mr. Adam Sheng from Techman Robots Incorporated, and Mr. Justin Kao, a Pauser Technology Sanjian Bahad. Justin is also at the FMM Industry 4.0, uh, very active committee members. And lastly, but not least, Mr. Johnny Huang, Industrial Technology Research Institute, E3. Thank you to all participants today for attending this webinar. I'm confident that the knowledge and experience to be imparted by the speakers today will be of great value to all of you, including myself. Have a fruitful day ahead. Thank you very much. Back to you, Fiona. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Next, we welcome Ms. Elwa Pong, the Director of Taichua KL Representative Office, to speak a few words. Good morning, Chairman of FNN, Senator and the Kuala Lumpur Branch, Mr. Jacob Lee. Industrial professionals, all online friends. It's my great pleasure to represent Taichua and the Taiwan Trade Center Kuala Lumpur to welcome you to this webinar. As the world's fourth largest export of machine tools, Taiwan machine tools max have the advantages of customization and integration. Based on a firm foundation of its renowned ICT industry to fit the demands for modern manufacturing. This enables Taiwan to deliver bright small manufacturing solutions to carry out industry upgrades. Take the Taiwan National Mask Manufacturing Team as an example. Last February, Taiwan was facing a worldwide supply shortage of surgical masks due to the COVID-19 outbreak. The Taiwan government collaborated with 29 Taiwan small machinery companies to organize the national team to production medical masks to fit the country's demand. We assembled 92 surgical mask production line in 40 days and boosted the daily production from 1.8 million to 90 million pieces. The national team demonstrated the Taiwan's crucial role in the global machine tool industry. Taiwan's machinery costs are key factor. Based in Taichung, with over 1,500 machine tool makers and 10,000 satellite firms nearby. Such comprehensive and high density cluster makes Taiwan's machine tools industry highly competitive and customer oriented. And over high quality products through efficient operations. That's why Taiwan is your partner for your smart manufacturing adoption. Today, 
Taichua and FN have held the webinar together. We invite the representatives from Industrial Technology Research Institute, High Wing, Techman Roba, and Abouser Technology. The experts from Taiwan and Malaysia to share their solutions to improve production automation and efficiency by participating in this webinar. I'm confident that we could collaborate new solutions to upgrade the both side efforts in smart manufacturing and automation. To get in touch with small Taiwan and global smart manufacturing latest technologies, the Taipei International Machine Tool Show, Tinto's online version version will be held on March 15th to 20th. Tintos Online have thousands of its exhibitors. He also organized the online procurement conferences, online seminars and workshops. Please explore more at www.tintos.com.tw or you can scan the QR code on the bottom right. Besides that, I also encourage all of you to participate in the Sourcing Taiwan Machinery Online Business Meeting, which will be held on March 31 this year. Sourcing Taiwan is the best platform for you to look for the machinery suppliers that can offer you a total solution for custom smart manufacturing. Last but not least, if you have any requests about Taiwan machinery, you are very welcome to contact us and find my colleague, Miss Jessica, for more information. We wish you, your family, and the company continuing health and safety. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eva Park, for that wonderful remark. Today, Taiwan Track Center has brought together Industrial Technology Research Institute to talk about the industry overview and three companies in the field of automation and robotics to present their advanced smart manufacturing solution. First, let me introduce Hyvin Singapore. Hyvin is professionally designed, developed, manufacturing of ball screw, linear guideways, industrial robots, rolling bearings, and medical treatment equipment products. Their ball screw is the first one in the world. Let's welcome Mr. Tian, Deputy Sales Account Manager of Hyvin Singapore, to share more with us. Hi, I'm Tian. I'm representing Highwind. Today, we will go through the topic of readiness of moving into Industrial Revolution 4.0. We will go through a few parts later on. Firstly, the intelligent manufacturing key function of robot, technical criteria, and also industrial automation, how to choose correct 4.0 solution. So everybody is talking about Industrial 4.0. But are we ready to step into 4.0? Where do we stand now? Have we done our self-evaluation on the readiness to move towards 4.0? In general industries, we are still mostly in 2.0 revolution as we are still using semi-auto, standalone machine with labor operating in. Some are still in 1.0, which is fully manual due to industry requirement, which restricted them to move towards 2.0 and 3.0. So we would like to offer the bridge, linking your facilities from 2.0 to 4.0. This is where robotic arms comes in, to replace label on repetitive job, to upgrade label to supervising role in terms of self-development. Also, to create a better environment for young generation employee to be keen to work in the manufacturing industry. Here we have a glimpse of what a smart factory looks like. This is a basic setup of a smart factory where you will see robotic arms, AGV, doing the routine assembly works, whereas only the supervisors or engineers 
manning the control station only, while all the data is being direct back to the control room for the monitoring system for the whole factory functionality. High wind will come in from the robotics arm portion in this aspect. So we'll go through three topics today. Product portfolio for our robotic arms, some real life general industrial application sharing, and also round it up with some real life automation production line implementation. So we'll go through high wind multi axis robot series of products. The articulated robot family in high wind consists of three different sizes of six axis robots. Payload's capacity ranges from 5 kg to 30 kg. The 605 series has a rated payload of 5 kg with repeatability of 20 micron. The 610 series has a rated payload of 10 kg with repeatability of 50 micron. And lastly, the 620 series has a rated payload of 20 kg or 30 kg with repeatability of 60 micron. The arm length varies from each model and ranges from 700 millimeters. 1.8 meters. Our robots are also CE certified. The SCAR robot family in high wind consists of two different sizes of robots. Rated payload is 2 or 6 kg, while maximum capability is 5 or 10 kg respectively. The 405 series has a rated payload of 2 kg with rateability of 10 micron. The 410 series has a rated payload of 6 kg with rateability of 20 micron. The arm reach for the two models are from 400 to 800 millimeters. SCAR robots are suitable for high speed pick and place or loading and unloading applications. The cycle time is able to achieve is 0.42 seconds. The Delta robot in high wind has a rated payload of 3 kg. The 403 has a cycle time of just 0.3 seconds, making it suitable for super high speed application like pick and place, packing, and stacking. It has a working diameter of 1001 millimeters and a working height of 300 millimeters, making it highly flexible and capable of reaching all items. Hywin offers a Delta robot in food grid as well, so it can be used in the food production or packing line. Hawin also offers electrical grippers with the world best achieved repeatability of just 10 micron. Hawin electric grippers feature object of recognition, features adjustable gripping force, position, velocity, and also accelerations. This is due to the grippers are using ball screw internally, unlike conventional pneumatic grippers. The grippers areas are lightweight weighing only from 400 grams to 1.9 kg. This is the layout for our communication protocol support. Now, we will share some real life industrial application from our experience. In this section, we will look at some examples and application of robot working with existing machines and replacing manual human labor. This will improve productivity and reduce errors or mistakes caused by manual labor. Here we are able to see two six axis robots working side by side in a tight space where it would usually be uncomfortable for human labor to be in. The robots are performing pick and place application of loading and unloading car components onto machines for machining processes. This way, space is able to be saved in the factory. And this is an example application of our 6-axis robot using our electric grippers to pick and place a shoe sole onto a machine for attachment onto the shoe. The robot communicates with the machine directly without any human intervention. This will be an example we have our 6-axis robot working together with a CNC machine for pipe groove milling. The robot is used to adjust the parts position and orientation for the next process of machining. And this example shows 6-axis robot coupled with electric gripper 
to replace manual label in pipe shrinking application. The GRIPPO is able to control its gripping force and the robot provides the small rotation required for the process. Here is an example of our high wind six axis robot coupled with three grippers to load and unload three parts per cycle for machining. This way, we are able to reduce the cycle time of overall process. Lastly, let us share some real life automation line which we are involved back in Taiwan. This is how it looks like before and after the implementation of the automation in the factory to move towards into industrial 4.0. I believe this is how the general industry factory looks like in the left side of the picture. It is normal to see this type of setup in any industry at the moment where they are still heavily dependent on labor force. But we are trying to move into the 4.0 where it will end up like the picture on the right side. So we will go through a few process where we actually automated in this factory. We start out with hole milling, 3D reverse scanning, shape carving, and threading. In this example, the robot loads and unloads the facet into the milling machine for hole milling as part of the initial process. In the next process, the holes are checked via 3D scanning and the dimensions and position of the holes are checked to ensure that they are within tolerance. With a high repeatability, the robot is able to work with the vision system seamlessly. In the next process, the robot loads the part into the machine again for carving. The robot loads four pieces per cycle in this example and also flips the parts over using a jig on the side. In this station, the robot is used to load and unload the part for threading process. An end effector with four grippers is used here to reduce the cycle time of pick and place application. Then it will be followed by air tightness testing and polishing. After all machining process is done, the parts are loaded onto air tightness testing bench using the robot coupled with two grippers. The parts that are successful are then sent to the polishing station for two pass polishing for a smooth finish. Using robots for polishing, a consistent result is able to be achieved as compared to manual labor. That's all that we will share. On behalf of Hywin, we look forward to work with you to achieve an industrial 4.0 future. Thank you, Mr. Tian, for presenting Hywin. Your presentation was very informative. Now there will be a Q&A section. Everyone is welcome to ask questions and Mr. Tian will be answering in live. Hi, good morning, Mr. Tian. Hi. Yeah. So, are you ready to answer the question? Yep. I can see that is okay. Yeah. Two questions here. So basically, I can see the first one is how long is the ROI for such automation upgrade? Okay. It depends on the industry that you are in. Uh, some general industry they allow about twelve to eighteen months. Uh, but if you are in the semicon industry, because of the lifespan of the product is getting shorter and shorter. So they would probably be looking at about maybe six to 12 months of ROI. So in terms of uh, a very, very solid answers, it depends on which industries that you're in. Okay. Yeah. So, so the second question. one, uh, does high wind provide the turnkey solution? So uh, for us, we are a component supplier, but we have uh, all our system integrating partners all around Southeast Asia. So we go to the key solution together with the uh, so uh, our solution provider, like our system integrating partners in all around uh, Southeast Asia region. 
Okay, another one. It shows the robot only. May I know how to link? Uh, okay, uh, how to link with Industrial 4.0. Okay, uh, from the view just now when I share my slides, uh, robotic arms actually come in Industrial 3. So before you jump to 4, you have to automate certain process and collecting the output data from there. So that's why uh, when we step in from the robot arm view, then that is one of the link bridge as uh, my mentioned in the slides just now. Then from Ramli Awang, do you have a low cost robot for name plate or label pasting? Okay, uh, to be very honest nowadays, uh, robots are not as expensive as a lot of people think. So a lot of people when they are talking about uh, robotic arms, all oh, expensive, try to send some inquiry to us. Uh, we would like, we would be very happy to assist because to be very honest, it's not as expensive as everybody thinks it is now. It's a very common item nowadays. Mm -hmm. Right? I hope that answered that. Then the next one. Uh, is this machine suitable for salt industry? Yes, food grade uh, salt, salt we have, uh, we have been uh, chemical wise. So we have a certain products to actually protect the robot itself. And also for salt, not an issue. Uh, we are also in, uh, already, we are already in sugar refinery uh, business. So we have a lot of turnkey line being supplied by our system integrating partners. So salt, no issue. All right, then uh, I think for one more, me, Wu Six Hian, okay. So uh, suitable for liquid pail cement bag. Okay, cement bag, uh, I would say it is okay, but we have to have a certain protection on the robot because as I mentioned, cement is one of the items that is corrosive. So we will have to handle with care. Uh, even like liquid pail, I don't think it's a big issue as long as the robot itself is properly covered. So we have the solution as well. All right, then another one, robotic arm, normally is pre-programmed, specific, uh, current moment available for real-time adjustment by specialty technician. Okay, yes, uh, I think everybody is getting in, like hanging on with the new norm for, uh, uh, because of COVID. So basically we can do remote support. It, it, it's not the olden days where you have to go on site, everything being tuned on the spot, everything. So we have a strong team from for Southeast Asia markets sitting in Singapore and also in Malaysia uh, office, technical office itself. So that is not the big issue. Don't worry about the support. We can do it remotely. And if you really need on site, we will be there. Then what is the production volume suitable to go for? Uh, we do not have a benchmark, but to be very honest, it depends on the value of your item. A lot of customers also doing a high mix, low volume, but because of the uh, components is in high value, so it's still worth it to do the automation system. Yeah. Okay. And the next one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Provide solution proposal. Yeah. Okay. Can we can speak more about that later on? Uh, so Ramli Awang side. Okay. I got you. I got you. So uh, yeah. It 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 is. Automation is to eliminate human error, that's for sure. So uh, that one we can further discuss. Maybe you can get the contact from our Titra site, then we can further discuss on this. All right. Then um, Chi we call system suitable for mental standing. Yes. I think uh, we got time for more. For q and I will yeah. go through all this first, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Okay, for Chi we call. Okay, for system suitable for metal stamping. Yes. It is especially uh, very much suitable. Metal stamping, we have been in the industry for a while. We have some portfolio. Uh, if you are keen, we can share some with you. And also final packing process for E&E. &E. Yes, we are definitely in E&E &E packing line as well. So look for us. We can become, we are also the consultant uh, in terms of in processing for robotic arms as well, right? Then next one, Joel. Yes, uh, does high wind robot suitable for furniture wood based? Okay, this one, uh, as I said, even corrosive environment, we are able to do uh, such process. So it all depends on the accessories that comes with the robot. So it is suitable. And there are a few uh, furniture manufacturers, they already started automation, especially robot handling. 
All right. Next one, Li Man Qing. Is the robot people sharp, suitable? Uh, well, I happen to have one here if you are looking at the thing. So it's not sharp. Basically, it is being, can be designed, customized. Okay, customization design. So you can actually uh, design suitable for glove. Yes, we are already in uh, glove industry. So it uh, wouldn't be an issue. All right. And uh, uh, okay, I uh, will skip Joel because basically furniture it's uh, able to handle. Then Liu, uh, estimate investment cost for a single machine station. I would uh, assume that you're talking about CNC machining. Uh, simple that link hooking up your robot to the IO, and if you already have an input output loading bay, uh, well. We are probably looking at probably less than 100k uh, in terms of uh, the whole integration. So it's not as usual. Maybe last time probably somebody will help tell you about maybe 200, 300. But now has it has become lower. But it depends on what kind of products you are handling. Maybe it can be a small robot and uh, doesn't have to be a big one. Then the cost will be fluctuating, but it wouldn't be as as expensive as previously. I hope that answer your question. Then robot arm suitable to use handle low 200 kg. Uh, okay, if you're talking about 200 kg, uh, robot arm, yes, uh, but sadly, uh, high wind do not provide such a large uh, loading type of robot, but uh, there are other brands that has it, and, but it, it, is, it is suitable. Uh, a lot of uh, actually automotive industry, they are actually handling cars. So those are, we are talking about half a kilo, half a ton, metal handling so uh, wouldn't be an issue lah, but not for suitable from high wind side all right uh, same line shirt different sizes yep correct means you have a uh, high mix high mix are uh, possible to be arranged if it's fixed we can program it uh, as uh, uh, provided sizes by your products or it can also be identified through vision so uh, on the vision side, also we are working with our system integrating partner to provide such solution. So, issue to identify. Okay, Jinping uh, Ang, your system. Sure, uh, I think you can get my contact from Titra after this. Maybe send them an email or, you know, uh, contact. We can discuss further. Uh, Anthony Ang, uh, President of Automation Mark. Okay. Uh, uh, sure. For uh, the contact from Titra side, we can discuss more. We are very active in actually Malaysia. Uh, any event, just come to us. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, can, how many more to go? Yeah, I think it's time we can pro uh, go to the next. Okay, just section. take one last one, uh, one last one, then we move on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will jump to okay. Uh, two in one welding. Yes possible we have a solution and the last suitable for plastic bottle yes we have a portfolio in taiwan as well so it is possible okay, okay. i think so, i think that's all for today for any other q a yeah. maybe you can get in touch with that side yeah for the for those unanswered questions please be patient we will reach out to you as soon as possible so we move for next section now our next presenter is Techman Robot. Techman Robot is the world leading collaborative robot and robotic solution company. Techman Robot is determined to use technical knowledge and skills to create all things smart and simple, to break boundaries, solve challenges, advance quality of work, and help succeed. Without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Adam, Asia Sales Director, to share more with us. Okay, hello everyone. Many thanks for your attending to this webinar. I'm Adam, Asia Sales Director from Techman Robot. Glad to be here giving you a brief introduction of Techman Robot and solutions. Techman Robot was built in 2016 with an employee around 500 people. Headquarters is located in Taoyuan, Taiwan. And we have fantastic robotic arm with embedded vision on a six-axis joint robot. 
with this great advantage, Tagman Robot became market number two Cobot brand from 2018 until now. There are near 10,000 units Tagman Robot sold in the world. By present, Tagman Robot has over 100 distributors in the world, including 10 in America, 30 in Europe, 16 in Southeast Asia and Australia, 10 in Japan and Korea, and 30 in China. This page shows Tagman Robot beside of our headquarter and factory located in Taiwan. Also, there are field branch office in China, Shanghai, Shenzhen, Chongqing. We also have branch office in Korea, Busan, and also Thailand, Bangkok. Last year, we started our branch office in Europe, located in Netherlands. And besides of the distributors, partners, we also have a, a good experience in worldwide for our valued customers. Here shows the, some branding of our customers. And according to 2018 data, Techman Robot already became market share 13% as worldwide number two position. We will keep moving on the step giving diverse application to every customers. And this is why we will turn to value added software and solution in following years. General application as pick and place, gluing, screwing goes well with Tagman robot. Especially perfect match for AMR integration, like cassette machine tending with landmark recognizing related position to objectives. Therefore, I would like to introduce one value add software with AI plus function and TM manager to you guys. Techman just launched one inspection with own AI service, including classification, detection, and segmentation. We call that TM AI AOI operator. Here is briefly specification of AOI operator. Come with one set TM robot, six pieces of external camera, one hub, and one IPC for TM manager software. Target is to verify each component module from controller cleared. Here shows the video of the AOI AI solution. First, the Techman robot will scanning working order information, then to robot taking pictures, uploading to server. Through the system in the right side of the video, we call the TM Manager system, TMM. And each picture taken from different angle will be indicated clearly on dashboard and which one is OK or NG. The golden sample just uh, reformed by imported picture from embedded camera and external camera. More and more picture help to make the module get high accuracy in short time. Right now, video shows the system running in our TM manager system. And according to the report, we can see that each item have this doing this uh, AOI classification.
Okay, here's left side is presented by AI module, and right side is by standard AOI module. So this page shows the bolt is missed, and this one shows the red cable is reverse insertion, and this shows the strap is missing, and this one shows the switch type is wrong, also be checked by the AOI system. And this one shows the power on and off by the here. The task scheduling page shows the wrong time status. Inspection result can be rechecked manually with pop-up pictures. And result page shows all the tasks have been done. Picture can be retrieved with different search filter. Authority control page to restrict assessment of personnel. And a setting page, user can manually adjust job sequences or bypass specific job. Backup page, data can be backed up to server manually or automatically. Next is pelletizing solution, which is first set complying for safety certificate. This package contains one set of Techman robot TM12, one pillar, safety controller, one teach pendant, one gripper, and indicator light. Only sensor and pellet detection is prepared by user. And this feature is saying that TM Studio pelletizing wizard is able to do simulation with few imported order for initial setting. And this pay package is capable to do regular palletizing for same boxes and palletizing for different boxes and regular depalletizing for same boxes and depalletizing for different boxes from different pellets. Change pellets for boxes also can do. Old and new pellets can have different size to transfer them from a pellet to B pellet. User can adjust the height of the operator pillar and flexibly replace the default any vector with their own any vectors or even add barcode identification functions on the operator base on their needs. And user can also install additional sensor and set up a collaborative space and it will reduce its moving speed to minimize collision risks, like here we mentioned. Okay, here is all my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adam, for presenting Techman Robot. No matter what you need, Techman Robot can always provide professional, innovative, and flexible solutions for your manufacturing plans. Now, there will be a Q&A section. Everyone is welcome to ask questions to Mr. Adam. Hello, thanks for asking the question. And I saw. Okay, actually, for compared with the other uh, traditional robot, Techman's, uh, as the video shows to you, uh, Techman robot, uh, the most different portion is we embedded the vision on top of the robot. And as we can show you, it's a, it's a collaborative robot. The safety is our first concern. And in the same time, we embedded the vision system. So Techman's user can use the same software to control not only robot, but also vision system. I think it's the, the best uh, advantage of Techman robot. In the same time, we create a, a, a simple uh, software uh, called a TM flow, TM flow system. So Techman robot users don't need to, uh, to learn the, the uh, different software between the robot by the coding, but using our flow chart system to control the robot and the vision system. So I would say like smart portion or embedded vision and the, and the safety for the collaborative one, and also simple for the flow chart control. Uh, more different portion, uh, like tech, tech and robot, uh, different from other uh, robot brands. Okay. And so let's go to the next one. Okay. 
about, about the palletizing question, as uh, we show, that, that is uh, uh, one uh, uh, sample that Techman uh, create the spec uh, specifically for uh, like 10 kilogram under a box and uh, can, uh, can be custom customized by uh, some system integrator to, to do the uh, size and the spec what you need and using Techman Robots uh, software to create. So basically we have uh, uh, two kinds of palletizing solution. One kind is uh, uh, the robot and all the spec is fixed by Techman Robot and uh, it's a standard hardware type. Uh, so it's more like a, a need to uh, check your application can meet it. And the second one is actually we provide only the robot and the palletizing software. This kind of uh, solution can provide to like system integrator and can customize to uh, customer end users uh, site. So this is the uh, answer for the second question. Okay. And for the third one is the local distributor in Russia. Yes, uh, we do have a, a distributor uh, for our sales partner in Malaysia, it's called the Semitsu. Uh, it's in uh, located in the Malacca in Malaysia. And so, uh, if you need uh, further information, we can uh, provide to you uh, through Tetra or uh, after the meeting, you can send a, a message uh, directed in Techman's website. And in the same time, actually in Malaysia, we also uh, looking for a new uh, sales partner. So. Uh, if in this uh, webinar, uh, any uh, company that is interested in Techman Robot, uh, we we can discuss discuss about the collaboration. Okay. 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 Robot arrange the software. Uh, third, uh, fourth one is uh, I can robot arrange the soft plastic. Mm. I can wait. It's about uh, twenty kg. Actually, uh, for Techman robots, our uh, because there's a collaborative robot, so the payload is uh, we are still developing. Right now, we provide the payload is uh, from six kg, uh, from four kg, six kg uh, to uh, twelve kg, and then it's fourteen kg is uh, max right now. But Techman robot right now we are de developing over a twenty kg is going to launch uh, in the beginning of uh, next year. So I think for 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 that application, we will uh, provide in the in the future. Okay. Okay, next one. And uh, and then about the palletizing uh, capability, actually, uh, about the box, uh, it's mentioned. Uh, it's mentioned is a one two meters, and uh, for the dimension, actually, uh, we we would like to uh, discuss with you for the further. Uh, size because it's not only the box size but also the palletized, palletized uh, size and the, and the way you want to put. So there's a different uh, kind of uh, the condition you need to consider. So uh, if you can send, uh, send the information to Techman, we can discuss further for this. Okay. Uh, Mr. Adam, last question yes. for you. Hello? Uh, last question. Robot Last soft question. learning. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. About the uh, self learning. Uh, uh, no, uh, the Techman robot. The data collected are they stored in your server or are they okay. on server? Okay. Okay. For Techman robot, our our AI. I think it's, it's the question is for the AI software, and uh, for Techman robot, our AI uh, solution. Uh, it is uh, actually something in the local server, which is uh, we provide, Techmanro provide uh, not only robot, but uh, about AI plus software. It's, it, is, uh, uh, it, it is installed in the, in the local server, which is means an uh, uh, end user can buy your own uh, PC or server and to running Techman's AI, AI solution and to train your own model in the local local way. And then uh, it can be retrained very easily because we have the software for AI to retrain the, the model and then to, to put in, uh, to put back to the automation system and let 
let the AI solution running better and better. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Adam. Okay. okay thank so you. the Q&A for Mr. Adam is thank you. For those unanswered questions, we will reach out to you as soon as possible. Okay. So the next one. Thank you very much. The next presenter is a Bowser Technology, Sindhiam Berhad. A Bowser Technology specialized in digital solution for the management of network and energy system in the automation of manufacturing, building, energy, oil and gas, transportation and water industries. With highly integrated mission critical hardware and software, a Bowser's solution ensure client network are always up and running and energy system is uninterrupted. A Bowser work closely with our client to optimize their systems through design consultation, site assessment and proof of concept testing. Let's welcome Mr. Justin, the managing director to share with us. Uh, good morning. My name is Justin Kao and I'm the managing director of a Pauser Technologies. We specialize in uh, digital solutions for network and energy management of industrial automation systems. Today, I would like to share some of our experiences in building a reliable industrial wireless network in a factory. There are many wireless technologies available today. Uh, wi Fi is uh, probably one of the most common and mature wireless technology that we use in our daily life. Uh, today, I would like to focus on adopting Wi-Fi wireless network in your factory. If you are considering other wireless technology, uh, for example, cellular, like uh, say 4G, LTE, or even 5G, uh, then please uh, feel free to contact me later. Uh, we are happy to talk more about that with you too. Uh, typically, wireless network is built uh, in a factory for mobile systems like, say, uh, automatic storage and retrieval systems, uh, automatic guided vehicle systems, uh, many of you call it the AGV systems, and a flexible production line uh, where you probably need to uh, rearrange your production machines from time to time. So uh, what are the challenges in uh, adopting a reliable wireless network in the factory? Okay, let's talk a bit more about that. Uh, so one of the most common challenges is to ensure your mobile devices, uh, for example, uh, the AGV or retrieval systems are always connected, no matter they are moving at high or low speed. Uh, to overcome this, you need to ensure your wireless network is capable of supporting high speed roaming. Uh, our solution, in fact, can uh, support up to 150 milliseconds of uh, roaming break time, uh, even under the condition that the wireless signal is fully uh, and securely encrypted. Uh, this basically translates to a very high speed of uh, uh, traveling time of uh, your mobile devices. Now, the uh, next common challenge is uh, your wireless signal becomes intermittent. Uh, say due to interference from uh, the walls uh, or the metal structures in the factories, uh, your running machines, or even motors, which actually generate a lot of uh, interference noises. Okay, so in this case, uh, you want to make sure your wireless network can support MIMO or, or so-called multiple input, multiple output technology. So uh, MIMO will help to minimize interference by producing a more spread out signal coverage area. Okay, so uh, we would actually recommend at least a two by two MIMO setup to be used in a factory environment. The next challenge is to ensure the wireless device do not fail easily. Uh, the mobile system in the factory can uh, generate a lot of uh, inrush current and also electrostatic discharges okay, uh, as your mobile devices are moving along the factory floors or uh, factory structures. So therefore, your wireless devices need to have a high power input isolation and antenna port isolation to protect the internal circuitry of your wireless devices. Our challenges uh, also includes uh, interoperability uh, with your existing wireless network and uh, mobile clients. 
and also uh, insufficient channel capacity uh, to support high numbers of uh, mobile clients. This uh, typically happen when you have a lot of uh, mobile devices like uh, tablets, uh, mobile phone or mobile devices that need to be connected uh, to the uh, system. So to overcome these challenges, first, you need to ensure the mobile devices in your network are certified by Wi-Fi Alliance. And uh, secondly, uh, the access point need to have high client capacity and also they can support both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz operating frequency. Okay, and the channel capacity can be even further increased by uh, using dynamic frequency design channels or commonly known as DFS channels. Now, uh, last but not least, uh, to able to effectively manage and monitor your wireless network, you need to have, have a wireless network manager okay, that can easily, uh, say, configure your devices, uh, visualize the entire wireless network, uh, including the wireless connections and so on, and also to see the data traffic and uh, wireless signal status of your network. All these are important monitoring factors. Okay, so uh, besides, the software should also allow you to monitor your network easily, anytime, anywhere from your mobile, from your mobile devices. Uh, for example, uh, smartphone or tablets, and of course, uh, it should also able to provide you real time network notification when there is an incident happen in your network. Okay, uh, I've covered uh, most of the common challenges to adopt a reliable wireless network in a factory. Uh, I uh, will not say that these are the only challenges. Uh, there are probably a lot other scenarios uh, that uh, will happen, uh, but we should really uh, uh, talk about it uh, later. And uh, what I've shared is really the main uh, challenges that we see in our past experiences. So uh, if you are just starting to implement a wireless network in your factory, uh, there are several key steps you should uh, consider. The key steps include, number one, site survey. Number two, site wireless performance analysis. Number three, wireless network design and layout. Number four, on-site POC testing. And uh, last and uh, really, really important, uh, this is continue to monitor and fine tune your wireless network design. And uh, this is especially important uh, within the within three to six months of uh, when you first start to implement your network. Okay, uh, I hope uh, you have gotten some understanding on implementing a reliable wireless network in your factory. Okay. Uh, Apehauser has uh, many years of experience in uh, providing wireless network solution and is more than happy to discuss this design with you in more details. Uh, we uh, specialize in uh, digital solutions for the management of network and energy systems in uh, industrial automation, as I mentioned at the beginning. And uh, our technology partners uh, include Moxa, Delta and uh, Robostel. Okay, our uh, contact information, website information are uh, all on the slide here. So uh, please uh, feel free to contact us or find out more about us from our company website. So thank you and uh, have a good day. Thank you, Justin, for your interesting presentation. It is wonderful to learn more about reliable virus network for smart factories. Now there will be a Q&A section. You may type your question in the Q&A box and we will answer it in live. Uh, good morning. Uh, see there's a... Uh, Can you see the question Q&A there? Yep, the first question is regarding site survey. It says, uh, Site survey is a necessary step for implementing a reliable wireless network in the factory. What does it cover and uh, what we can expect from a site survey? Okay, uh, so basically the first thing is uh, really going to your factory site to look at uh, how factories is set up, uh, including uh, any possible interference like a wall, 
uh, metal structures or even uh, noise sources like your motors and uh, even other uh, wireless access points. And then with that, uh, we will start identifying the most optimum location to put the, uh, our access points. And after that, we will come back uh, with a, a second survey, uh, now really putting the, uh, temporarily putting out the access points and then start measuring the signal coverage uh, in your site. Uh, so we will look at the uh, signal coverage, the uh, signal strengths, the uh, noise and uh, other uh, potential uh, issues. And uh, at the end, uh, you should expect a site survey uh, wireless report uh, to show you the uh, signal map, uh, showing the signal strengths, uh, noise, uh, signal noise ratio, and so on. And then finally, with the map, uh, you are able to uh, fine tune the best location uh, to put uh, your access points and also to cover all your moving device like AGV and so on. Okay. Uh, is a uh, second question. Why uh, wireless network management software is so important? Okay, uh, good question. The, uh, the network management software basically helps uh, to visualize your set network setup, uh, including uh, your wireless setup as well. So uh, this helps you to uh, proactively identify uh, the performance of your network, uh, including your wireless connection. So as soon as there is a failure, then you are able to quickly identify the failure point and also the uh, cause of failures. So this will actually save you hours of uh, work to try to go down to your factories to find the right location, uh, uh, the, the failure points and uh, troubleshooting at a point and so on. Okay. The next question is, uh, what is the minimum bandwidth to adopt uh, wireless for uh, AI? Okay, good question. Uh, so this uh, really depends on uh, the, uh, the data that you need to run. So uh, it could, uh, it, I would say uh, for a typical uh, Wi-Fi network today, uh, uh, if you put out the latest uh, Wi-Fi, say uh, Wi-Fi 6, or even, uh, even the older Wi-Fi uh, at the uh, end standards, uh, it can already accommodate up to about 150 megabit or up to even uh, 500 megabit of bandwidth. So there's probably more than enough you know, for you to uh, run your AI. Of course, uh, at the end, we need to test it because uh, it really depends on how uh, data intensive is the AI network that you're trying to run. Next question, uh, can we connect different applications, for example, AGV, tablet, production, uh, monitoring into a single wireless network? Answer is definitely yes. Uh, what you need to consider is, uh, uh, one is to segregate the, uh, uh, segmentize the, uh, uh, the network. Uh, so if, uh, you say putting AGV into a one network, your production monitoring into a network, the key thing to consider is the priority or how critical your network is. So normally uh, for a higher critical or higher priority network, you want to set higher priority for it so that they always get the best bandwidth and without any interruption. And then uh, those with the lowest priority, of course, you, know, you, you uh, put it at a lower bandwidth uh, to do it. Okay. So answer is yes, you can definitely connect all of them into one network. Okay, okay. Thank you, Justin, for your question, uh, answer. So we move forward for next presenter. Our next, last but not least, presenter, Johnny from ITRI. ITRI is the Taiwan largest and one of the world's leading high-tech applied research institutions. Developed 2030 technology strategy and roadmap to boost R&D innovation. Be part of ITRI. Industry Science and Technology International Strategy Center, ISTIs, were established in August 2018, merged from the former Industrial Economic and Knowledge Center, IE Care, and International Center, IIC. Mr. Johnny Huang, the Research Manager of ITRI, will introduce the industry overview of Taiwan Smart Automation. Let's welcome Mr. Johnny. Good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen. 
Thank you all for being here. My name is Johnny Huang. I come from Yichun Yichun. It's called Industrial Technology Research Institute. I'm a researcher in machinery industry. Uh, it, today is my pleasure to have the opportunity for introducing Taiwan. Uh, the title of today's presentation is Citizen Integration in Smart Manufacturing. Uh, in 2020, under the uh, influence of COVID-19, economy activity and the human life all over the world have changed. We saw the energy of Taiwan in the most need item, face, face mark. We demonstrated the ability of the system integration of mechanical system, material system, uh, electronic system. Taiwan fire up is mask production line to make surgeon demand integrated machine tool and uh, machinery and uh, establish uh, SOP in a very short time. Taiwan machine tour industry showing in, in the slide enjoy a good global reputation of central its ability to deliver outstanding products, price, and uh, quality. Taiwan made a machine tour, they are not just important in the world now, they are indispensable, especially. Robotics in factories is an important part of smart mechanical system. Uh, Taiwan's robot products have become more and more competitive, competitive in a, in a, in a world. The slide shows the uh, robotics in factory life cycle is currently in the uh, growing phase. We think is uh, is uh, turning point of Taiwan's precision mechanical and the electronic industry. Industrial robotics are growing uh, state steadily and uh, are about to enter region. Expansion of application field should be excellent through uh, value add application service. Citizen integration is uh, the process of uh, integrating and uh, shaping the uh, uh, component of the uh, sub citizen into, sing into a single system. Uh, for example, integrating cloud computing, big data analysis, and uh, artificial intelligence to carry out fully automatic production and uh, quality monitoring to improve production efficiency. In the process, it's necessary to insert the function of all citizen integration can smoothly operate smoothly under the single system. Taiwan's precision machinery industries and uh, automated equipment manufacturing gave Taiwan's industrial advantage to increase, increase the value of product and uh, thus maintain Taiwan's competitive edge in the international market. So we see high energy and the high value added technical services should be an important item in the development of the uh, industry. It will be a different development model for Germany, Japan, and uh, China. Uh, let's to say that we strong our capability in developing human machine coordination technologies and uh, capabilities in critical 
major technologies for intelligent robot or smart machinery equipment and the process capability in integrating robotics and the manufacturing system. Capability in customization smart machinery products. Uh, Taiwan e play a key role. Develop an automation system with precision machinery and uh, coal, uh, capitalizing on the expansion of application domain to foster the forming, foster the forming of an acting dumpling class. So I, in fact, I want to emphasize Taiwan e play a key role and the uh, equipment manufacturing starts as a uh, GPM, the Ventec, Yanhua, and the carry out planning of manufacturing system from an automation perspective. Taiwan already has an advantage of manufacturing in machinery equipment product and ICT product. ICT is the main information and the communication technology. Over the year, many companies have uh, accumulated citizen integration capability in the manufacturing process. Uh, its description is shown in the slide, can be provided for your reference. Taiwan is maker developer of cross-generational evolution with this smart manufacturing in the global competitive situation, we have the quality, price, and the stability to be competitive. Taiwanese companies work out their own dedicated teams of cross-generational evolution and the speed of competitiveness to improve relentless. With the change in the uh, investment uh, environment of uh, domestic industry, manufacturing companies from different sectors have raised the idea of return back to Taiwan and uh, invest. Local companies have also brought up the need for automation uh, due to labor shortage. This is forming a developing environment for the domestic industrial robotics industry, uh, forming the domain, domestic uh, smart manufacturing industry and uh, all the automation system. The, so the above is my presentation. Thank you. If you have a chance, I hope to communicate with you more in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnny, for presenting the industry overview. Perhaps everyone has better understanding of Taiwan smart manufacturing. Today, Tetra invited ITRI to talk about the industry overview and the leading Taiwanese company, Hiving Technology and Techman Robot. Malaysian company Ekbalzer Technologies to share their latest information on advanced manufacturing with you. We hope, we hope that their presentation will be informative and fruitful. Moving up, we have this questionnaire that would, we would like to hear from you. To submit the questionnaire, you just have to scan the QR code and fill in the questionnaire. On behalf of FMM, we would like to thank you for your time to join us. Please remember to complete the questionnaire. The material we will send to you within two working days. Shall you email me at fionaalliancefmm.org.my if you have not yet received the webinar's materials. Thank you so much and see you soon.